Committee, I would ask the presenter to please come forward and state your name for the record and on behalf of the committee, welcome and you have 20 minutes for your presentation this afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. My name is David Lepofsky, L-E-P-O-F-S-K-Y. I am chair of the Ontarians with Disabilities Act Committee. With me uh, to my left, your right, is uh, Carol Reback, from whom you heard this uh, morning. And to my right, uh, no, to, your other well, left. to my other, other left, left, further to my left, and that's not a political comment, <laughs> is uh, Catherine, maybe, I don't know, is uh, Catherine Bremner who you'll be hearing from this afternoon, both uh, members of the ODA committee, active supporters of this movement, and role models to all who've been seeking to tackle the barriers facing people with disabilities. The Ontarians with Disabilities Act committee is a voluntary, nonpartisan coalition of over 100 disability community organization, and many, many individuals, both those who have a disability now and those who will have one later. We've come together to advocate for the enactment of a strong and effective Ontarians with Disabilities Act. Our goal is a barrier-free province for all 1.6 million Ontarians with disabilities. We are organized in 23 regions of the province. We bear no allegiance to any political party. We've offered and continue to offer to work with all and to work together to achieve our goals. We have led the charge for, the mo for this legislation since we formed in this building a few days over seven years ago. In coming together, we have brought the issue to the three political parties, solicited the promise, now famous, from Premier Harris on the 24th of May, 1995, that the Ontarians with Disabilities Act would be enacted in the government's first term. Through consultation with our membership, we devised the 11 principles for the Ontarians with Disabilities Act that all your parties adopted unanimously three years ago, as have many city councils. Through further consultations, we developed a detailed blueprint for the Ontarians with Disabilities Act, which we've shared with the government and the opposition three and a half years ago, and which we've been eager to see translated into legislation. We view our role as to provide positive proposals and to provide all parties with a roadmap that will get them and all of us to where we seek to arrive. You will find from the government's 1998 consultations on the Ontarians with Disabilities Act that the disability community around the province of their own accord rallied around our blueprint and our 11 principles. And you are hearing at these hearings voices from around the province who are rallying around the substance and the core focus of the amendments that we've placed before you in our brief. Before I turn to the amendments that we wish to place before you and the need for them, I need to speak only briefly about these hearings themselves. We led the charge for public hearings and are delighted that there are public hearings. But in the name of those who cannot be here because of the way these hearings are being conducted, it is necessary that a barrier that has been created in this process be highlighted. The fact of the matter is that we advised the government months ago that people with disabilities cannot be asked to appear at hearings on one day's notice. Given the impediments to getting accessible public transit in this province, you just can't do it. In fact, and despite that advice, these hearings were scheduled with people getting but days notice that they were happening where they were happening, and in some cases only 24 hours notice that they were invited to present. That is a barrier. That is a huge barrier. That is a, forgive me, a cruel barrier. Whatever be the outcome of these proceedings, this hearing process will leave an indelible stain on the face of this legislation. And I, can, I hasten to add that the barrier about which I'm speaking, which relates to the core of our democratic process, is a barrier which this bill, if enacted, would not require to be removed. If I may turn to the substance of the legislation that is before the committee, I want to just begin with what I believe to be common ground. It is now, from reading the speeches within the House, undoubted, undisputed between the, the parties that are members of this legislature, that people with disabilities face 
far too many barriers, physical, technological, attitudinal, and so on, in their daily lives, that this is wrong, that it's bad for Ontario, that we need to remove them, that we need to prevent new ones, and that doing so is good for all Ontario, for people with disabilities, for business, for government, for the taxpayer, for everybody. So the only real question is how do we do it? There is even then an agreement between all, now, an agreement with our message as the ODA committee. And that is the message that it must be done through strong and effective legislation. Well, in turning and looking at this legislation, I asked the committee a question. If a law had been tried, if we tried through legislation, let's say for five years, and it wasn't good enough, do you think that would be time to fix it? Well, the government thinks so. They've proposed a five-year review. What about 10 or, or 20 years? Well, surely it's long overdue. Well, the fact is that we've had the Charter of Rights and the Human Rights Code in this province guaranteeing enforceably equality rights and human rights for people with disabilities, including provisions that address the kind of barriers that we suffer from for 20 years. We don't need to wait any longer. We don't need to wait another five years to know that we need a law with more effective enforcement than we have now. We don't need to try a law that doesn't have effective enforcement and, and just see if we'll learn something new that we haven't learned in 20 years. Similarly, if you've tried a policy for six and a half years and it hasn't solved your problem, it hasn't made significant progress, I asked the committee, isn't that long enough? We've tried a policy in Ontario. The government tried a strategy of voluntary measures. The government tried a policy of leading by example, the government's words. The government tried a strategy of cleaning its own house first. We've tried it. It hasn't worked. We need something better. For purposes of turning to the bill, it's important for me to emphasize what we, why the amendments must be made now, not as some committee members have posed in questions sometime later. We need to make those amendments now because we've already lost too much. A child born on the 24th of May, 1995, when Premier Harris wrote us with this pledge, is now school age and has lost out on the opportunity of having accessible childcare probably in his or her own community and having those opportunities improved by strong and effective legislation. A teenager who was a teenager on the 24th of May, 1995, has now lost out on the opportunity of having theaters and restaurants and, and coffee shops in their community become more accessible so that they can enjoy the social life, the dating, the socializing that their peers have. Their teenage years are over. We can't give them back. A person entering senior citizenship on the 24th of May, 1995, if they're still with us now, their abilities have waned. Their golden years of their life could have been blessed with more opportunity than we're giving them because of the delay in having this legislation happen. We can't wait any longer. We need the amendments to make this law strong and effective. I wish to turn to specific proposals for amendments. Now, given our, our 30 pages of, of amendments, only lawyers could write 30 pages and call it a brief. <laughs> I'd like to focus on amendments that derive from one very important theme where we can show you that there are things that aren't in this bill that the government says should be there. Surely you should amend it to put them there. We have in, uh, in Appendix 1F to our, our, um, our brief, copies available uh, for, members, for uh, members of the public present, documented a range of areas where the government, through the mouth of the citizenship minister or others, has stated that there are certain things in this bill which on our analysis are simply not there. We ask above all else that you amend the bill to put them there. We've offered you a focus on how to do that. Allow me to give some examples. First, the government has stated that the purpose of this bill Indeed, its core vision statement is the achievement of a barrier-free Ontario. It is said that's the purpose of the bill. Unfortunately, that's not what the bill says. The bill merely says that the goal of the bill is to improve opportunities. 
Well, if you put three ramps down in three of the venues that, that Carol Reback spoke about that she encountered in one day, you've improved opportunities. The bill's goal has been met. That's far too little. Amend the bill to make it have the purpose that Minister Jackson says is the government's objective. Number two, the minister has said that in this bill, that people, the people with disabilities, the disabled community, will be put in the driver's seat to drive change. Now, speaking personally for a moment, there's no one eager, more eager than me, to experience what it's like in that driver's seat. And I promise when I'm in there, I will not park in a disabled parking spot, <laughs> if I can read the sign. However, the fact of the matter is, the bill does not, as the minister has urged it should, or said it would, give people with disabilities input in setting standards, give people disabilities a right of input in, in the making of regulations, require consultations with the disability community for establishing time frames. Indeed, it does not assure people with disabilities, either the community or the advisory council, the opportunity or the assured entitlement to monitor implementation or have input into any of the barrier-free plans required under the legislation. It doesn't say that. The minister says he wants it to, we agree, amend it, put it in there. There's nothing to debate. It is the government's policy. Let's make sure the bill conforms with that policy. The government says, and the minister has said in the House and in the media, you have the quotations and the citations before you, the government says that in this bill, organizations will be required not only to develop barrier-free plans, we prefer to call them that than accessibility plans, but also to implement them. Compliance will be required and the government will enforce it. Right now, the bill doesn't say that. We say it should. We say amend it so that the provisions that provide for the barrier-free plans provide that organizations, ministries, municipalities, and so on, not only do they have to make the plan, they've got to make a comprehensive plan and they've got to implement it. And we say either amend the bill to provide a mechanism for enforcement, and we've proposed one, the Human Rights Commission, not our first choice, but working within the framework of the bill, that's where we, we say we should go. Or alternatively, pass, make it clear in the regulation making provisions that there is an opportunity, uh, or there's the power to make regulations defining enforcement procedures. If I could go back to the disability community having input, it's not enough to just say, we can be asked. Folks, we've been asked on any number of issues. The point is, we may not have been asked enough, we may not have given enough time, but we need something more than being asked. We need a requirement that somebody listen. And at the very least, we propose provisions akin to those in the Securities Act for the Ontario Securities Commission, if it's good for them, it's good for us, which require that when we make proposals, that the government has to give an answer. They don't necessarily have to agree, but at least give us an answer within certain timelines. And that if the government's going to put forward proposals, they be posted for an opportunity for us to have input in writing or in person. Because of the limitations of time, I'm not going to take you through all the different uh, changes that are needed to bring the bill in compliance with uh, the government's uh, statement, but there is uh, just a bit more that I think is worthy of comment. The government has said that um, uh, under this bill, no new barriers will be created with tax dollars. Now, as I say those words, who could disagree with such a goal? Unfortunately, the bill doesn't say that. It talks about the government having regard to accessibility, considering accessibility. It doesn't say it has to do accessibility. We say amend the bill to comply with what Minister Jackson said in the House, with what undoubtedly would be beyond dispute whatever we might otherwise have differing views on among people uh, in this room. Beyond the amendments that we have proposed that are tied to Mr. Jackson's and the government's words, we propose a series of other amendments to make sure this bill has real force and effect. I can't list priorities, but I can give examples. Number one, a lot of this bill has been delegated to the cabinet in the form of making regulations. And a number of members of the committee from the government side have asked opponents to have faith that even if you're not happy with the bill, you'll be happy with the regulations. Let me suggest with respect 
that after the six and a half year battle that we've gone through to get a law passed now or brought forward now that was supposed to be passed in the first term of the government, at the very least, you can understand why people with disabilities might be a little hesitant. What's the solution? We've offered it. Put time targets or time deadlines in the bill by which regulations have to be made. If the government is as committed as we are told they are to get those regulations going, to hear from people with disabilities and to pass them to make this law happen and to make it work. Put those timelines into the bill. Make it the law that those timelines have to be met. Let me take just a minute to respond to some other themes that have come up at the hearings that I think we need to address. Stated briefly, people have been asked at, this hearings, at these hearings whether this bill, unamended, is better than nothing at all. We say it is a tragedy <coughs> to even ask that question. After six and a half years, after such broad recognition of the barriers we face, after 20 years of trying other strategies, surely we can do better than to debate whether something should be passed, i.e. whether it's slightly better than nothing. Two years ago, this House unanimously resolved that an Ontarians with Disabilities Act be passed that is strong and effective. Make the bill strong and effective. Let's not have to debate whether it's nothing or near nothing. Similarly, we've heard it said that this bill, with its flaws, is the best there is in Canada. With respect, it's just not true. What's offered as new in this bill, what's proposed as leading edge, either exists in other provinces in some cases, or existed in this province until the government abolished it, namely the Provincial Advisory Council, which the current government abolished three months after taking office, um, or is less than is provided in other jurisdictions, such as the federal uh, regulatory activity in the area of employment, uh, pardon me, removal of barriers facing people with disabilities. Let me conclude. Let me suggest that we have reached a, tri a critical crossroads here. You've heard extraordinary stories from people here and in other cities about the barriers they face that this bill will not address. Our coalition has been hearing those for six and a half or seven years. They tear at you. They hurt. People are hurting. Here is a chance in a spirit of nonpartisanship to take the message you've heard so unanimously from so many different voices and not debate whether it's a good first step, but simply debate whether it's a good step. Not to debate whether this law does something more than nothing, but to be able to agree among all of us that it's strong and effective. There is a cliche that justice is blind. It is said that justice is supposed to strive uh, to experience blindness. We say that if justice has had the opportunity to experience blindness, Let's pass a strong and effective Disabilities Act so that blind people and indeed all people with disabilities have the same opportunity to experience justice. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. We have a minute per caucus, and I'll start with the official opposition, Mr. Parsons. Thank you. Um, the, uh, the format of the hearings has, has proven to be very difficult for a number of reasons, but I continue to get calls, as, as you had mentioned, about people unable to access the, the, within the time frame. But on the other hand, I have a sense that the ODA committee in, has, in a way, been holding the public hearings for the last six and a half years. And what you brought to us today is not your opinion as much as an opinion of, I don't know how many individuals, how many groups. Um, I personally find it tremendously beneficial. And I guess I don't have a question as much as an appreciation for, I think, it, if, am I fair to say hundreds of people? that have been involved over the last six years to bring this together. Um, maybe, I, I don't mean it to be flippant, but the difficulty we're dealing with with the bill is a hearing problem. The government is not hearing what the persons with disabilities are saying. Well, thank you for coming and saying it. Thank you very much, Mr. Martin. Well, th th thank you very much, uh, Mr. Lepowski, for not only coming today, but for the the work that you've done over such a long period of time to um, keep us all uh, feet to the fire <coughs> on this issue so that uh, we could in fact be here today um, uh, however challenging being here today is um, I, I hear you uh, loud and clear and, and admire your um, 
your 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 um, continual continual uh, sort of state of of of, of optimism <coughs> um, and and uh, tenacity on this. Uh, you know, you're you're convinced, I, I believe, uh, by what you've said, that the government will by Tuesday do the right thing um, and actually enshrine what uh, the minister has said in the House he wants to do with this bill. Um, I don't think there's any doubt in anybody's mind around this table what's called for if the bill's going to be effective. Um, it has to have s some method of, of enforcement. There has to be some timelines. Um, it has to cover the private sector. Um, there has to be some resources attached to it. Um, those are some of the, the key things that we've heard. The question I have for you is, what if on Tuesday we find out that in fact this isn't a bill that we can all applaud and support and, 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 and claim victory for? Do we then abort? <clears throat> there are different opinions in the community on that. And the most I can say is this. It is cruel to, have been, to be given that choice. If somebody's in a car crash and is terribly ill to be told found at roadside and if they're told sorry we can't really treat you We're, would you like Tylenol or would you like Advil <laughs> that's not fair and it's 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 a it, it's, it's a choice that is that people with disabilities in this province do not deserve and I will only say this the message I have been hearing from all over the province and that we have been hearing from all over the province by people who have been involved with this issue recently and for a long time is this. This issue is not going away. It's not going to stop. It's not going to end. People know what they need and they're going to keep working on it until they get there. And, and all I could say is, I'm one of them. And so is the ODA committee, so are my colleagues here, so are the people in this room, and so are people all around the province. Thank you very much. Government sign, Mr. Hardiman. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and thank you very much for uh, for your presentation. And I want to compliment you on uh, on all the hard work you've been doing um, in the um, time I've been here at Queens Park. Um, I suppose I know you almost as well as I do my colleagues. Uh, I see you here almost uh, almost as often though. because you're working uh, working on behalf of the cause of the uh, of the uh, the ODA and the uh, the people that you represent. I just wanted a couple of clarifications uh, on the um, the duty to comply and and the have regard to. Mm -hmm. And the fact that the uh, uh, the word shall ensure that the design of the buildings and there is a in the act uh, there is both in fact that the government shall ensure that these requirements are met if it's a building they own um, or are a building they own are is going to be extensively renovated. That have regard to is based on if they're going to lease space and of course they're talking to the landlord and they shall have regard to what is required. Um, I guess my, my concern is with making that mandatory too, in, in I come from rural Ontario, if a, a facility is needed and it's going to be leased, if the choice is not having the government service or having it done properly, I think the government should have regard to uh, getting the best uh, facility they can under the circumstances. So I, uh, I, I just wanted to uh, point that out. The other thing I would just like to ask you, if I could, sir, um, in the... Um, in timelines, uh, if we, if it was in as to implementing, as you suggested in your amendments, um, what type of timelines would you see appropriate to, uh, uh, to work towards those goals? Let me deal with the second part first. With respect to timelines, our brief proposes that two be put in the bill. Minister Jackson was asked on CBC Radio three weeks ago how long it would take, uh, what timelines he saw. He said the Ontario government should be in compliance, should be able to be in compliance for four or five years. Let's take them at that. We propose, you put in this bill, that beyond anything else, the Ontario government must achieve this goal within five years. Put that in the act. The minister said it. We can live with it. Let's do it. Similarly, we propose that this legislature, which has been so full of barriers and continues to be so, let's put in there five years for it. For the other timelines, we propose regulations be made to fix the timelines but we propose a time frame within which those regulations have to be made. In other words, the government has said that the regulations could set timelines, and we're not objecting to that as long as we don't have to wait six years to find out when the timelines begin. Let's have a period of time fixed in the regulations, and you'll see them in our amendments, for when certain kinds of regulations can be made, including timelines. With respect, let me just answer very briefly, because I know our time's up. With respect to the question of have regard to and so on, Firstly, I mean, let's, let, let's, let's be frank here. The provisions regarding buildings talk about new government buildings. How many new buildings is the government going to be buying or building in the next little while, given our financial situation? 
and renovations, maybe some more, but still, that's not the core piece. The core piece, um, in terms of the no new barriers, is capital expenditures, purchasing goods and services, grants. <coughs> Billions are spent, according to your colleagues who have spoken in the House on this bill, per year. Just require that no new barriers be spent on that bill, on, on those. Now, sir, you, you suggested that maybe there may be exceptional situations where you can't do it at all. So you could say, they shall be no new barriers except where there's compelling justification, or except where showing can be made of undue hardship, or something to that effect. But instead of having this open-ended requirement as it is in the bill now, which is simply have regard, which frankly guarantees us nothing. Thank you very much, and on behalf of the committee, thank you very much for your presentation this afternoon. Thank you very much.